Welcome to the Women's National League Wrap for Series 16. I'm joined today by Shauna and Emma. We're going to be talking about the four games from this weekend. Starting off with Bowes and Wexford Utes. Wexford beat them 1-0. Emma, I'll come to you first. Do you think Bowes are unlucky to not get maybe a draw off it or were Wexford the worthy winners? Um, that's where I was on Saturday. I was at that game and an absolutely fantastic game for the afternoon. The noise coming from Daily Man Park with friends, family, fans back. It was electric, a really exciting game now right up to the very end. But I suppose Bowes, the last time they played Wexford, lost 7-1. So this was this was really a comeback for Bowes. And to to not score a goal, I suppose it's disappointing for the team. But for Wexford, um, I think they were a bit unlucky themselves. They had a good few shots that goal. But um, look, came away with the win. And it was Bowes fought right up to the very end. Some amazing plays, some individual players. And the stats have just been put up on the... Women's National League socials of um, the likes of Yvonne Hedigan, you know, amazing games and only fresh into the Bowes squad. But at the end of the day, Wexford um, deserved the win. They're such a strong team and they're individual players, the likes of Aiden Clancy, Sinead Taylor, and of course, we can't talk about Wexford today, Kylie Murphy, your star player, just um, really put on a masterclass of football and showed why they're up there near the top of the table. Yeah, definitely. But as you said there, great progress from Bowes to go from 7-1 to 1-0. And I thought they had a great game. The second half was definitely really tense. So it's credit to them as well. Wexford were probably the stronger side and deserved to get the win. But it's good to see Bowes progressing and the individual performances progressing as well. We'll go on then to Shelburne beating Galway 2-1. Shauna, Chloe Masaki and Alex Kavanagh were back on the bench. How important could they be coming back into the squad? Yeah, we spoke last week about Shauna Fox and, and Kiva and I completely forgot about Chloe and Alex. Um, yeah, I think, you know, again, just adding strength to the bench, that's probably where, where bows were a little, a li- or sorry, shells were a little um, light on the bench. But um, like Chloe's a phenomenal athlete and um, she's, she's had a lot of hurdles to, to jump over and, and setbacks and she just meets everything head on. So she'll bring a, an, an extra level of strength to the team and Alex is, is a young, technically gifted player, again, that can, can go into midfield and, and pull strings and, and, and move the ball very, very easily um, around the pitch. So I'd like to see those feature this week. It'd be nice to see a, a few fresh faces in the team. I think especially Chloe Masaki, a lot of people would love to see her coming back after, you know, such a tough injury and things like that. Same with Alex. But yeah, it'd be great to have them back in both of the sides. We'll go on then to P-Mount beating Cork City 5-0. Last week we saw Shelburne with a brilliant goal scoring performance this week it was P-Mount who were racking up the goals uh Emma do you think that maybe the attacking forces are going to be crucial within this title race this year do you think I know obviously we've talked before about the likes of Saoirse Noonan with Shelburne Noel Murray but P-Mount as well have the top scorer in the league Elna Ryan Doyle you know they've got Lauren Kelly coming in as well do you think their attacking force could be as strong as Shelburne's Absolutely. And that's what's going to be required to, you know, separate the top of the table and distinguish a winner. It can't come down to, you know, individual players, even though we just spoke about how great they can be. It really does have to be that team effort and um, you're going to need, I suppose, looking at that top of the table, the standard's so high and it's brought football on leaps and bounds. Um, even speaking to management earlier in the year, the likes of strength and conditioning coaches, nutrition, they play such a big part of football now you know it goes beyond the pitch so all these factors coming together really make match day so much more you know important and that's that's what's going to come down to at the end of the season is who who can separate themselves at the end of the day yeah it's those really fine margins and I suppose just getting those big goal scoring performances is going to give teams confidence as well I think we were talking about before P-Mount we're a little bit shaky in maybe the last couple of games but if they keep scoring goals and winning games 5-0, they're going to have that confidence and they're going to, you know, want to outplay Shelburne in the league and things like that. Finally, then we had DLR Waves and Athlone Town, which was a one-all draw. Athlone have really proved to be a team that's tough to beat this season. And sometimes they are putting in really, really good performances and in the last minute they might just lose the game or not pick up a point. But it was really, really good for them to get a point off DLR Waves, who are a really, really great team this season. Shauna, do you think, even though Athlone are kind of at the bottom of the table, second from bottom, do you think teams still fear playing them because they really are tough to beat? 
Yeah, they're a very physical team. They're not afraid to kind of back down from the, the physical side of the game. And like, if you look at them over the course of the season, they are conceding goals later on. And that's just an experience thing now, you know, like maintaining focus for 90 plus minutes. So I think um, that will eventually, you know, come to them. Um, and yeah, like last week, the 2-1 against Piedmont, they were unlucky. You know, they'll probably come out of that game thinking we defended really well if we just had held on but um again they've got a, a few young players in there like and um, we're in uh, Devaney in midfield is for me even one of the standout young players of the the, the season so far and um you know they brought uh, it was a Chloe Flynn in and um Roisin Malloy as well at the, at the back have been very very strong so for, for them it'll happen it's just a matter of when and that kind of bottom of the table, the bottom five places, I think there potentially could be a huge amount of change there. Do you think there's any team who's going to really surprise us and move their way up the table more than we might have expected? Emma, I'll come to you first. I suppose you can't rule out Atalanta at the weekend. I know Dale are missing a couple of players, like so Eva Brophy and all, um, out for that game. But, you know, to, to contest Dale or ways is huge and... I suppose most of these teams at the bottom of the table at the moment are looking to get up into that second half and to finish in the second half. So I don't think any team could be ruled out. The likes of Bowes who finished at the bottom of the table, you know, moving their way up, they went into the season with a goal of finishing in the top half themselves. So I do think there's there's just as much competition at the bottom of the table as there is in the top. Yeah, definitely. And Shauna, what about you? What do you think? Yeah, just watching over the course of the season, I've been most impressed with Treaty and, and at Lown and like Treaty's to go back from 2 nil to draw 2 all with Galway and then at Lown at the weekend. Um, I think, you know, they're, they're showing kind of progression over the course of the season. Uh, but yeah, I think there's like five points maybe or six points between fifth and last. So uh, it's it's very, very tight. I can see Galway pulling away a bit just based on the performance at the weekend and the, the older or more experienced, I won't say older, more <laughs> experienced players stepping back in and, and kind of, helping them uh, get a bit of stability. Um, but yeah, I could see maybe Treaty um, that's dependent on, you know, them, I suppose, keeping the likes of uh, Aoife Horgan there and, and um, some of their attacking players as well that, that have been giving them a bit. So I can definitely see for me Treaty and, and Athlone pushing on a bit more. They just need to get that one kind of victory that'll give them that burst of confidence. Yeah, definitely. And it's it's great because the top of the table is so exciting at the moment, top three, and then the bottom, like five places, as I said, are really up for grabs. So it's great to have that action kind of at both ends of the table. But that's a wrap on Series 16. Thanks, guys, for joining us and giving your thoughts and opinions. There are midweek games to catch this week as well as weekend games next weekend. So loads of Women's National League action coming up and we will speak to you again soon.